Hi, I'm Samantha Rose Bernstein. And I'm Jim Bernstein from New York City. And this is The Rosie O'Donnell Show. On today's show, Molly Shannon, Debbie Allen, and crossing guard hero Jill Cook. Hey, Hit it, John! People in the back were so excited. Hi! The back row is very enthusiastic today. How are you, Jim? Good, great, never how, better. How are you, Samantha? Good. Is that your grandpa? Yeah. Yeah, and he bought this for you at a charity event? That's right. He's pretty yeah, nice. Aunt Jan actually bid it. No kidding. Well, that's a wonderful thing. It's a, you pay a lot of money for this? I didn't ask her. Okay, good, good to know. <laughs> we try to milk people for as much as we can get, frankly. <laughs> how old are you, Samantha? Six and a half. Oh my goodness, what grade is that? First? Yeah. Who's your teacher? Mr. Berry. Oh, he's good. He's a good guy. How do you like school? What? I love it. You what? I love it. You love it. Can you read? You're in first grade. Can you read yet? Yeah. Oh my goodness. What books have you read? Um, Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web? <laughs> With Wilbur and everything? You read it by yourself? Oh my goodness, Samantha, you're very smart. Have you read the Harry Potter books? Um, no, but my mom ordered one. She did. <laughs> Where'd she order it from, the computer? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Well, you know what? We're gonna outdo mom, because we have some in the back, and I'm gonna give you some of the commercial, yeah. all right? Terrific. Oh, all right. All right. You did a great job, Samantha. Nice to meet you, sweetheart. Very nice to meet you, Rosie. I'll nice see you later. You, Rosie. You're welcome, honey. Say hi to John McDee, the McDee yeah. out there. Good, and yesterday it's been great. Yes, yeah. the, the happy Wednesday people. Very happy. Thank you! Very happy to be here. <laughs> it's so great. Can we get a shot of the woman with the binoculars? Look at that woman with the binoculars. You're like literally you're like 60 feet from me and you have binoculars. What's your name? Hi, Teddy. What are you looking at, my nostril? What are you looking at? Come down here, Teddy. Sit here. You can be close. Come on. Teddy, Hi. nice well, to meet you. you. How are you? Have the mic. Okay. Just sit and relax, All enjoy, right. get an up close view. How are you, John? Very well. What'd very you do well. last night? Anything? So, you know, my, that great new show, Once and Again, which I love so much at 10 o'clock. You Tuesdays. watched it, yeah. Love it. Love it. Did you watch that last night? No, I didn't. What'd you no. do last night? I had an open house. I'm a teacher. You had an open house? Yes. At yep. your school? Yep. Met every parent. No kidding. Yep. What grade do you teach? Fourth. Are they good at that grade? They're like 9, 10? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's the year of the big tests, and it's a lot of what work. What kind of big tests? Uh, the New York State test in ELA, That's English Language Arts. a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress. When I was a kid, you know, they had those tests in fifth grade? Uh-huh. And you know how I know that? Because that's the year my mother died. Uh -huh. And they had the tests right after my mother died. And oh. I would, well, wait a minute, wait. It's a good story in a oh, way. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not really good that she died. But right. when I went back to school, I had to take the tests. And I think because it was such a sad thing that, you know, these five kids had no mom, they gave me like 100 on those tests. They cheated for me. You're kidding. I'm not kidding you. Mr. Hargrave. Wow. Mr. Hargrave cheated. And then I saw him sort of going to the other teacher. You know, like, poor kid, a mother died, you know? Right. And then I caught on. Oh. So then the rest of the year, fifth grade, I totally didn't do any homework. Right. And whenever you say, where's your homework? I'd go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe I used it like that when I was 10 years old? 
That's uh, pretty manipulative. It is, yeah, <laughs> I know. You know, my son's manipulative, too. Is he? Yeah, he's four years old. You know I have what a he... three-year-old. You do? So what's, yes. the, what's the name? Cameron. Girl or boy? Boy. Boy, yes. Boy. Now, is he manipulative? Uh, not really, no. Not he's yet. pretty good. Wait till he gets to four. Okay. Want to hear what my kids did last night? Sure. He takes my stickies from my office. You know, I'm, I'm very sort of anal retentive. I have all <laughs> color-coded stickies. Right. So he t takes the stickers, and he puts them all over the house. And I see them, and right. I give him a timeout. And he's sitting there, like, timeouting. And I said, OK, are you ready to tell me what you did wrong? He goes, Mom, I know you're upset, but I just wanted to make our house beautiful. Oh, how sweet is that? It's manipulative. It's not sweet. Oh. Because then he knows I go, oh, oh honey. I and then you see him, like, behind my back to his sister. <laughs> she fell for it again. So you have one son? No, I have one son and one daughter. How old's your daughter? She's a year and a half. Oh, you She's see? She's adorable. Enjoyable, aren't yes. they? Yes. Oh. It, when she says, instead of saying thank you, she says cuckoo. It's really? so cute. It's so adorable. Cuckoo? Cuckoo. Do yes. you have any idea why? Uh, I'm not really sure. What are you going to do when she asks for cocoa? <laughs> <laughs> cuckoo for cocoa? You know, I don't know. Cuckoo or cocoa. Uh, right, I won't know. So did you watch any TV? You didn't get to see any TV last night. No, because I was at open house all night, and then we left at 4 in the morning to be able to come here. Where do you live? Binghamton, New York. No kidding. You drove yeah. all the way down. There's yes. a SUNY up there. SUNY right. Binghamton. Very good, I yes. applied there. Did you? I did. Yeah, I got it's a in. good school. I didn't go there. You didn't? No. No. I went to Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, uh -huh. and I had a 162 grade point average. Oh. Do you know what that is? Yeah. D minus. Yeah. Doggy dash. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. This is what why? happened. I went to environmental science. We had Mrs. Nelson, and I grew up in New York. And I didn't know anything about environmental science. I thought it would be easy. Right. And so we went on this farm, and we had to, like, go into the mud in the swamp and take, like, mud samples. And, and I didn't want to do it. Because we had to do that once. Scary oh, and gross, lost isn't a shoe. it? You lost a shoe in the mud? Yes, I did. In college? <laughs> no, no, right at school at Donnelly, where I teach. Um, we had to go out in the, we have a uh, wetlands behind our school, uh -huh. and they were teaching us about wildlife. Right. And I stepped in the mud and lost my shoe. And, <laughs> and I had to walk back with a sock on. It was raining and yucky. Are you kidding? No. The rest of the day? No. Yeah. Do the kids tease you about that? Uh, the ones that remember. I would have teased you about that. <laughs> you probably would have. I would have called you hop along for the next three years or something like that. Because <laughs> I, once I threw up on my uh, science teacher, Mrs. Nelson, I did. We went to, um, Great Adventure Amusement Park. And you threw up And on she was her? so nice because she went on the ride with me because nobody would go on the ride with me, probably because Lauren Williams was being mean to me for reasons I don't recall. <laughs> but, you know, Lauren and Jackie used to be mean to me sometimes. They, you know what they would do? They would call each other up and tell each other what color they were wearing. And because the, the three of us were friends, and then I'd go to school, and then I'd be wearing a different color, and then they'd say to me, you're the odd one out. Oh, no. Jackie Ellard, Lauren Williams. I can't Williams. believe that Jackie did that to you. You know my friend Jackie? I took yes, her to the Grammys. Right. Yeah. I know. She's like my best yes. friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I did watch her show every day. Do you know what else she did? Let me tell you this. You don't know this one. <laughs> Once when I was about seven or, or eight, we were at Jackie's house, and it was a big snowstorm. Remember when it used to snow a lot when we yes. were little? Yes. So I had on my big sort of Michelin Man snowsuit like and we used to have. Put your arms exactly. Down. Yes. So Jackie lies underneath the bush and she looks up at the sky and some snow falls onto her face. And I see this, but she doesn't know that I see it. She right. wipes it off with a mitten. And I didn't say anything, being a good friend, not wanting to embarrass her. Right. So then Jackie says to me, Hey, why don't you lay down here, Ro? You can see the sky really clearly. And I knew that she was trying to get the snow to fall on me like it had <laughs> fallen on her when I looked the other way and pretended not to see it so she wouldn't be embarrassed. Can't I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What friend? What no, kind I of know. friend? She's done a lot of things. And you, know, I, you heard about my sister with the soda, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I never forgot that either. I don't blame you. Tell everyone the story if you remember. Tell everyone. Well, I don't think I can tell as well as you. All right, thanks. In, um... <laughs> 1972, I believe it was. We never really had a lot of soda. My sister had some soda. There was none left from the big RC Cola bottle we used to get for 99 cents at Food Town. And um, she had that much soda, and I was having my tuna for sandwich. And I said, Moore, are you done with that? She was ready to throw it away. And she goes, oh, you want this? I go, yeah, there's no soda left. She went, oh, really? And poured it in the sink. I can't believe. I can't either. I can't it's, Frankly, it's frightening. It is. Yeah. Yep. 
Sisters and friends. I know. Can't live with them, can't live without them. It's good thing that you and I met each other because we're yes. pretty much perfect and we could be friends. We could. Yeah. Absolutely, I exactly. agree. Can yep. I try your binoculars? Sure. Thanks. Let me just try Look these. Look at the lady Can in the back the row, row right there with the red shirt on. Yeah, who's that? That's Karen Burns. Yeah, is she a teacher too? Yep. And right next to her, Liz Coons. Hi, Liz and Karen. Can and I ask a question? Sure. Where's your students today? Don't you have class? Yes, I do. I have a personal day and they're probably watching me right now. You have a personal yes. day? Yes. Yep. We made a tape for you. You'll probably be able to see it later. A personal um, day is supposed to be for some sort of tragedy in your family. No, no. We're, we have those too. Oh. We have, those are bereavement days. Those are bereavement days. Yes, yes. This is just feel like hanging out with Rosie Tough on You Kids Day. Well, sort of. not exactly, yes, guys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How many exactly. kids in your class? Um, I have 24. All right, I'll give you 24 Rosie O'Donnell t-shirts so you don't get in trouble when you go back. Oh, you are the greatest. Right, give me a high five. Thank you. Go back to your seat. I have to do a show. Okay. Give me the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, our teacher from Binghamton. Well, I had stuff to tell you about, but I can't tell you now. We'll have to wait. I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay. We, you know, hey. sometimes just things. Go Look at other people going. I have binoculars. Pick me. <laughs> right. Uh, we have a great show today. Our uh, first uh, story is a wonderful story about a woman who was a crossing guard for many years, and she saved the lives of two children. And the children are here, who she saved, and she's here, able to walk out after much. Uh, rehabilitation after her accident uh, when she saved their lives. They're so gonna tell you all about that today. That's up first, so don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> about real life heroes so when I learned what a crossing guard did in Florida I just had to have her on my show here to tell us what happened please welcome Amber Tony and the mom Chris Stringer <laughs> hi Amber hi how old are you seven seven is that your brother yeah. How old is he? Ten. Ten years old. Where do you live? <laughs> what state? <laughs> Florida. Down at the Florida. There you go. Good. Okay. What happened, dude? You were on uh, your way to school. What happened? Yeah. Tell me. Um, I was walking across the street like usual, and um, I was almost she and uh, this kid my mom babysits. Uh -huh. They were already across, and um, I was almost there, and um, I wasn't paying attention, and. and um, all of a sudden, uh, we heard squealing tires, and uh, she pushed me, and I almost fell. And by the time I turned around, she was already on the ground, and her uh, sign had flew all the way to um, the um, fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. Whose son is this? The crossing guards? No. Whose son? Who's she talking to? Mom, help. Oh, the <laughs> sign! I thought you said the son. I thought the crossing guard brought her son to work. I thought, how weird is that? Yeah. You know what I mean, Tony? Yeah. The sign flew all the way to the fire hydrant. Yeah. How scared were you? Uh, scared. How scared were you? Very, very scared. Did you see the, the car coming, the screeching tires? Yeah. Did you think, oh my goodness, I'm going to get hit by a car? For a brief I moment? I knew I wasn't. You knew you weren't going to get hit. I wasn't going to get hit, but I thought that would brother was. You did. And that probably made you very sad, right? Yeah. How come you were behind your sister that day? Just sort of lazily hanging out? No, I was trying to get ready when, um, and then I started running down the sidewalk to catch up. Right. So you were I a little late that day. Yeah. You were playing Sony PlayStation at home or something, right? No. Watching cartoons? Dressed. What were you doing? Getting dressed. Well, well how it took you so long? You got up late? What happened? Yeah. Too much Captain Crunch? Come on, tell me. No, I got up late. You got up late. So now, Mom, you saw the whole thing happen. Yeah. That must have been terrifying. It was very terrifying. Your house, you can see the bus stop from where you live? The, I stand out in the backyard every morning, make sure they get on the bus okay, and I watch them cross and everything, so it was very terrifying, yeah. Did you see the car coming as well? I wasn't really paying attention to the car. I was watching them cross, but when I heard the squealing tires, then I noticed it. It seemed like he squealed his tires forever, you know, but she kind of went running and Push them out of the way. Yeah. Can you imagine? I was I was so flabbergasted. I just I shaked all over and I felt helpless. And you that. ran to check to see that she was still alive. Yeah, I had to jump over the fence and run down there and 
say she's still alive, and then I had ran back in and called 911, and then ran back out there again. And while she's laying there, she, she was worried about the kids, wondering that the kids are all right, and making sure somebody crossed them. <laughs> Well, that's uh, the kind of hero we like to celebrate on this show. Let's meet the amazing woman walking out by herself for the first time. Please welcome crossing guard Jill Cook. Great job, Jill. you too. How are you? I'm doing fine under all the circumstances. Yeah, now you were, you, how long have you been a crossing guard? Almost eight years. Eight years. Uh-huh. You saw the kids crossing and you thought it was going to be a normal day? Right. And yeah. this guy comes speeding around the corner. Right, sure did. What'd you yeah, think? Sure did. did you think or you just acted? I just kind of acted, I guess, just reaction, because my arm's already out anyway. You right. Know, I just put the sign up. Right. So. so you pushed them out of the way? Yes. And the car hit you? A truck. A truck hit truck you? Hit me. It did? Yes. And you were thrown onto the hood of the car? I was up on the hood of the truck and then off onto the ground, yes. Did you think for a moment, boy, I'm not going to make it through this? Yeah, it was kind of scary. Yeah. Just a little bit scary. And you were... I was concerned for my kids. You were? Yes. You were conscious the whole time that you were yes. waiting for the ambulance? Yes. And worrying about the kids? Right. Oh, my goodness. Now, yes. what did you do before you were crossing guard? Um, I was a nurse in New Jersey. Really? Yeah. And do you mind if I ask how old are you? I'm 66 years old. 66 years old. Yeah. Had you ever had any kind of circumstances like this before where the mm -hmm. kids were in danger? No. No. This is the first time, and I hope it's the last. You want to remind everyone about the dangers of speeding in a school yes, zone? Yes, I do. Go ahead. I certainly Take do. Take your time, Jill. I stand out there, and I see people going by me, putting their makeup on, combing their hair, talking on the phone, reading the newspaper. You name it, they're doing it, and they're very, very careless. And this is why this happened to me, because people are careless. And you need to be very, very careful driving, period, but between 7 and 8.30 in the morning, you need to be extra careful because children are going to school. Exactly. <laughs> How long was your um, stay in the hospital? I was in the hospital for a week, and I was in rehab for th a little over three weeks. Wow, and did you break any bones? I broke my leg, my knee, my hip, my pelvis, and five ribs. And did they tell you that you wouldn't be uh, up doing this job again? Did they tell you that? Well, no, they're hoping that I'm going to heal, and I'm hoping I'm going to heal, because I love my kids and I want to go back to them. Well, and I bet you will, Jill. The day I that should've... you go back, you call us, and we'll announce it on the show. <laughs> All right? Thank you. It's delightful to have Thank you here. You. We wanted to get you a little something. The kids and mom and I, we want to get you a little something. A little birdie told us that you could use a little uh, Frigidaire makeover in your kitchen. Oh, my. So we got you the Frigidaire Gallery Series refrigerator, the super capacity washer and dryer, fabric softener from Snuggle, and laundry detergent for you, Jill. Give me a big kiss. Thank you. You are more than welcome. Great thing you did. Say we'll be back after this break, honey. Go ahead. I know. Starting October 8th, you can catch her as the Catholic school girl, Mary Catherine Gallagher, and her new movie, Superstar. Please welcome back to the show the hilarious Molly Shannon. They're hysterical. So Can you good. get them, Kitty? Okay, you're right. There they go. They're doing it. I don't know who they so are, but you should tour sweet. with them, Molly. You should. Thank you very much. Woo! 
You look <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Were you limping a little? Did you hurt your toe? I did. I am. Um, yeah, I've actually, um, I actually broke my baby toe. Um, it was so stupid because I am, um, I was in LA and for some reason, everybody out there was always talking about um, giving up carbohydrates, like this diet. Yeah. And so for two days, I gave up carbohydrates, and it made me crazy. I was like, I'm never going to, I'm just going to, I'm never going to eat, you know, I'm only going to eat carbohydrates for the rest of my life. And, and I was just like, woo! Like, it set, made me crazy. Really? Like, I was, like, planning the rest of my life. And then I came into my apartment, and I banged my toe, and I broke it. <gasps> So that, it was just dumb. So I just can't, um, I can't do those diets. They make yeah. me crazy. I'd rather just, um, like, eat normally and, you know, that's the way it goes. I, I can't diet. It makes me nuts. Now, are you back on the carbos since you broke your toe? Yeah, back on the carbohydrates. Went right to Dunkin' Donuts as soon as yeah. you get, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand <laughs> that. I just don't, I don't know. That's all right. Me. You look good. You don't have to worry about Thank that. Thank you. How was the SNL big 25th anniversary? It was great. It was, a. Uh, I brought my sister, uh, Mary, and my brother-in-law, Brian, and it was unbelievable. It was like star-studded. Like, eh, did you watch it? I did watch it. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was incredible. And um, afterwards, we went to the party, and I'm just like, I get so starstruck. Like, I, I'm just as bad as anybody else. I was like, oh my God, there's Kevin Spacey, and you know, I introduced my sister and my brother-in-law to everybody, and it was incredible. It was really like a special night. All the hosts were there too. Yeah. All the you, now, can you pick a favorite host, or is that sort of not all right to do? Um, there's so many great ones, but. My personal favorite is Alec Baldwin because, yeah, he's They're so They're enjoyable. Great. All the Baldwin boys are enjoyable, in my opinion. Yeah. Yes. He's just like, woo, that's it. <laughs> um, okay. He's just, um, he's really nice. Like, when he's hosted the show many times. And um, when he was hosting, he takes the whole cast out for dinner. And this one night, um, we went out for dinner, and we, we all got to playing Truth or Dare, the whole cast. And we dared, um, actually, it was... Sherry O'Teary dared Alec to get up at the restaurant and go up to the waiter and unbutton his shirt seductively to show his hairy, sexy chest <laughs> and go up and ask the waiter in a very seductive voice if there was any more crushed red pepper. <laughs> and, um, and he did, and we were, we were laughing so, it was the funniest thing ever. I mean, he fully unbuttoned his shirt and went back to the kitchen looking for crushed red pepper. <laughs> and the waiter was like, uh, yeah, I'll bring it out in a second. You know, it was very funny. You should never dare they're a Baldwin brother. I know. Because they will do it. They will. They're they're wild. Yeah, they grew up right near me, you know. Oh, they did? I didn't know them, but we grew up in the same, yeah, area when I was a kid. Big Irish Catholic family. There you go. Yeah. You and me both. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Are you getting recognized a lot now? Because, you know, you, your fame has really been... Whoosh. Now, you got the movie coming out. Are people noticing you? Yeah, yeah. A, lo a lot of people come up to me, and I really, really like it. It's very nice. People are very nice. Yeah. But the only thing I don't like is I have this doorman in my building who's, um, he's always, uh, this just happened, like, I mean, not too long ago, he was like, Molly, you, you look, uh, you look nice. You look like, you look like you're spreading a little bit. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> and then I, like, I got on the elevator and I started to go to my floor and I was like, what? I felt a little, like, dizzy, like, <laughs> did somebody just slap me an insult? And then I went back down and I said, excuse Excuse me, what did you say? And he said, you used to look so nice, and now you're spreading. You're spreading. You're spreading all over the land. Oh, really? Yeah, so mean. So um, now whenever I see him, I'm like, Tsuh. you know? So I don't like him. No, no. <laughs> well, he's going to know it now. It's such a weird little story, but I was like, oh. Yeah, well, people so. say that to me, too, when they see me in person. They either say, you look so much better in real life, or I thought you'd be a lot fatter. Or, yeah, they, people say right to your face. They don't really think about it. They just yeah. say, yeah. People say to, um, yeah, it's funny. People don't always think about what they say, but that's okay. You get tough. And it's, it's going to um, be even harder for you after the movie comes out, Superstar. Really? I think it is. I, I don't mind that at all. It, it's really an honor. I struggled so hard to get to where I am, so it's, it's like a gift to me. I, I don't mind it at all. I, I love it. I, I appreciate it. What'd you it. just say? I love it. 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 from her new film right after that.
totally know what you mean. <clears throat> that book, Angela's Woo! Ashes. Back with Molly Shannon, Woo! the very Irish, very funny. I feel Molly better. Shannon. I feel better. You were nervous. She was, I was telling, telling me. I was telling Rosie, I get really ner I get so nervous when I, I. It's so weird. And Rosie said, you know, you do live television, but I get like. I'm so scared. It's so weird. It never goes away. So I just have to announce that because I felt a little embarrassed. All right. <laughs> I was nervous. nervous, Molly. Little <laughs> nervous. I get nervous when I have you, to do speeches. You do? I don't get nervous. This is funny. But you know, I don't care that. If I'm right. stupid, whatever. But if I have to give a speech like at a college, right. no way. I won't yeah. do it because I think they're all thinking, she had a 162 grade point average. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm afraid I'll misconjugate a verb or something, and they'll all be going, we got it to Harvard, she's a moron. You know what I mean? Uh, so everyone has their own little things. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. That's true. Yeah. I can't wait to see your movie. That's so nice. Thank you. I really can't, because you crack me up, Molly, that's I have very, to say. That's now, so nice. you know Mary Catherine Gallagher yeah. from the show. <laughs> and um, so nice. who thought of making this into a movie, Lauren? Um, Lauren came to me and he said, what do you think about making this movie? And I was so excited, but I was a little scared. And then I got together with the writer who I love, Steve Corrin, and he said he was available. And so we worked on it, turned the script into Paramount Pictures, and they wanted to make it. And it comes out Friday, October 8th, and it's, it's just really sweet. Will Ferrell's in it and Mark McKinney and Harlan Williams and Glynis Johns and just a wonderful cast. And it's very funny and it has a lot of heart. And I hope that you all go see it. And maybe they will. Show them the clip, perhaps they will. You want to set up your clip? Okay, good. Is this your first time setting up your clip? Yes, I've never set up a clip. A movie I clip. feel like I'm playing house. Like, run the clip. Um, okay. okay. Okay, basically, um, basically the character is, I, um, she's very obs obsessed with um, this boy that she can't have and kissing, and she sort of lives in a fantasy world, and to escape her pain, she sort of <laughs> in her head a lot. And this is a little scene about that. And it's not based on anyone I know. No, I don't care. <laughs> Say roll it. Say roll it. <laughs> what? Say roll it. Roll the clip. There you go, Molly Jo. <laughs> Because that's what you are. That's all right, baby. Superstar. <laughs> you, I wish I knew you when I was a kid because you would have been a riot to hang out with. What did you do for playtime? What did you? I was very bossy. I liked to play house a lot. Mm. A lot of house. I was always the teacher, the mother. I was always the bossy leader. I see that. And I love playing Barbie dolls. <gasps> and I, I was just obsessed with Barbies. Have you heard? Yes, I know. I, that you have your own Barbie doll. This would be me, the first full figure Barbie. And look, so her thighs cute. are twice the size of a regular Barbie thigh. Her arm, twice the size of a regular... She's a full-figured Barbie. She is. I made them have a double chin. Look, she's... <laughs> because, really? Yeah, because when you're a little girl and you play with those Barbies, I thought, is that the right image? But this, she, her waist so... does not go in. It goes straight down. That's so Isn't that good? Nice. Yeah, so you designed good. it? I designed this. I, I want one. You, well, here you go. I Ooh, keep them stored for all the guests you. they want it. So nice. Isn't that enjoyable? Yeah. Now, you, you just finished making this huge, big movie with Jim Carrey, too, you big superstar. I'm still doing it. Still I'm doing, doing it. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, right, with Jim Carrey and Ron Howard's directing it. It's incredible. Um, so I'm still doing that, um, and uh, I'm doing that with Saturday Night Live, so I've been pretty crazy and stuff. Do you remember the uh, song from that, from that show? Um, no, which song? When they all sing, all the who's. Sartu glory, Sartu glory, welcome Christmas, Christmas. Remember that? Yeah, it's so beautiful. All the who's down in Whoville. With who their tall big and eyes. Who's small. And you're Mrs. Betty Lou Who's. Betty Lou Who, right. The mother's the a little mother. girl. Yeah. How fabulous is that? It's gonna, gonna be? be amazing. It's such a nice project to be a part of. Can yeah. I just say one thing about you? Yeah. I love you, I love you, I love you. Molly so Shannon. Nice. for her work as an actor.
actress, singer, dancer, director, choreographer, and producer. And now, who would have thought it? She has a new book out. Please welcome author Debbie Allen. <laughs> One time, I don't know if you recall, at your restaurant in L.A. At Georgia. At Georgia. Over some catfish, I bet. That is the best food I've ever had. Oh, thank that you. That is my favorite food. It's my favorite restaurant in oh. L.A., next to Chin Chin. Oh, I like Chin Chin, too. That's enjoyable yeah, as I well. I like it, too. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I saw you, though, in Sweet Charity. Okay. Fabulous. That Wonderful. Was fun. That was the best. Bob Fosse. Right. Thank you. That was a, that was a real... Uh, I just did it to work with him. I can imagine. Yeah, and I learned so much. He told me he did it all with lighting. He only had three steps. That's what he told me. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. Right. Have you seen Fosse on Broadway? Oh, yeah. Wonderful, oh, my friends isn't it? are in it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. It is an amazing show. Yeah. I fell in love with you during Fame. Oh, thank that was, you. you know, first the movie, then the TV series. Thank what you. a great show that was. Yeah, it really was wonderful. It was six years, two years on network four years in first-run uh, syndication, and huge overseas. I mean, I would go to Italy or England or Spain. I couldn't walk down the street. Really? Yeah, it was very powerful. I saw the movie in the theater mm -hmm. back when, you know, you didn't go to see movies five times, but I saw it like <laughs> ten times in the theater. And the guy from that show with Gene, the red hair. Oh, G oh not the, Gene Anthony. Oh, the other one. Um, He's now on ER as the bad doctor. He's been playing bad parts. He played in RoboCop. I think he was a bad guy in one of he those He was movies. the horrible guy on X-Files who used to get the blood and rejuvenate in the bathtub. <laughs> he plays the scary, horrible guy, and he was so nice in fame. He's a nice guy off camera, too. Do you know what's weird? I was in Chin Chin. This is true. I just remembered this. And I saw the guy from fame, from the movie, who played the, guy, the comic. Yeah. And I went up to him, and I started to sing, Fame, I live forever. <laughs> he was not amused. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm glad I didn't break out into the body electric because I thought, woo that would have been bad, you know, Debbie? Would have been bad. Now, how did you get to do this, writing a book? What is this? You can do everything. I love this so much. This is my first time writing a book, and it started out as a musical ballet at the Kennedy Center, right. and I adapted the 12 Dancing Princesses, a, a Grimm's Brothers fairy tale, and I made them all boys, put them in Harlem with the sons of Reverend Knight, multicultural boys, and uh, it's told from the dog's point of view, happy, tells the whole story, and it was such so well received, we had to bring it back twice to the Kennedy Center. So then I got with Kadir Nelson, the illustrator, who is brilliant, who's really fantastic. Yes, beautiful folk. Uh, yeah, illustrations yeah this, I found yeah. him on, on uh, Amistad. We worked together on that project. Which Debbie produced. I don't know if you're aware of that, but a brilliant, brilliant movie. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he came to see, thank you, he came to see the, uh, the ballet, and I said, we got to make this a book so the world can enjoy this story. And I read the book to my children last night. It's <laughs> a wonderful book. It's called Brothers of the Night, right there by Debbie Allen. And it's, uh, <laughs> tell everybody the uh, story, basic story, about the shoes. And yeah, well, the story is that there, every morning, the boys' shoes are torn to shreds, just worn up, dirty, tacky, jacked. And nobody knows why. And so every housekeeper nanny gets fired or quits because they can't solve this problem. They want to blame it on the dog. But ultimately, the boys are really sneaking out to go dance and at the big band ballroom every night. Right. And they don't think it goes with their father's image, who's a reverend. And uh, they don't want to tell him. So it's about communicating, you know, them finally getting to tell their father the truth. And there's this wonderful character named Sunday, mm. who's a magical housekeeper who kind comes. Kind of Mary Poppins-ish a little yeah, bit. She yes, she is kind of Mary Poppins-ish, absolutely. And she comes, and she's got all this magic, and she can dance, and the boys fall in love with her, but they still don't tell the truth. And she helps them solve this problem with their father. It really is a wonderful book. You did a great, great job Thank on you. it. You really did. Thank Your children you. are too old to enjoy this kind of no, book, though. My no, my son is 12. Oh, he's 12? Yeah, my daughter's 15. They love all that. They're my best critics. I always, you know, run things by them. Are they into dance like you? Oh, my daughter Vivian is uh, studying very hard. She's a student at the Kirov Academy. Wow. Yeah, in Washington, D.C. That's, that's probably the most prestigious dance school in the U.S., one of them, it's at least, It's one of the it? most profound in the world. Yeah, we're very lucky. And it's hard, her, being away from home. And my 12-year-old, uh, he's really into football. He would like to dance with his father, Norman Nixon, you know, this jock thing. He exactly, the little basketball thing. I said, child, every time I look up and see some football player wearing a wedding gown, don't be getting mad at the dancers. <laughs> You tell them. I swear. 
You danced your whole life. As a child, you just were dancing from the moment As you arrived? As a child, I think so. You know, when my father died, I, I uh, went through his things and I found a letter that my grandmother had written to him when he was in the service overseas. And the letter said, you should see little Debbie. She jumped off the washing machine and into the dirty clothes just dancing. You should see little Aww. Debbie. I couldn't have been more than about three or four then. No kidding. Yeah. So it was in your blood from the beginning. I think so. And you're doing something now with Patti LaBelle, is this true? Ah, yes. Who I adore. Oh, she's fantastic. I'm doing a new ballet at the Kennedy Center called Soul Possessed. Patti LaBelle is starring in it, Carmen DeLavala. Wait a minute, uh, Patty's gonna dance? Yes, Patty's gonna dance, honey. Wow. Yeah. Is she yeah. gonna sing too, I hope? Yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, Desmond Richardson. From Fosse. From Fosse. He's a wonderful, wonderful dancer. Rasta Thomas, uh, Ty Jimenez is an incredible cast. When does that start? It starts the last week of October. It's gonna uh, open on the 28th. It's only gonna run like five days. I'm gonna come. Please come. see Patty LaBelle dance? You've got to come. I fly across yeah, the country. It's only DC. It. It's a shuttle flight. I'm there. Can you get me two tickets? I'll get you two tickets. All right, there Absolutely. you have it. Absolutely, you're there. Uh, it's delightful to see you. The book is Brothers of the Night, and it's really wonderful. It is. Go pick it up. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you, Debbie Allen. Excellent. We're going to do the opening part of the show, because since we didn't get to do it. All right. Remember, we had yeah, the room yeah. come down exactly. and chat. And exactly. Meeting. It's all right. Okay. It was fun. It's good. Um, John, you know what I did last night? What did you do? I went to the National Breast Cancer Coalition dinner. Excellent. And uh, they were honoring Terry Semmel and his wife. Yeah. Yep. Formerly of Warner Brothers, he's right, now uh, right. going to retire. Yeah. And um, also, uh, Hillary Clinton was there. Oh, great. Our future senator from the state of New York. Love that. <laughs> and um, it was a really, it was a wonderful yeah. time. And oh, Ron excellent. Perlman, the head of Revlon, mm -hmm. and Ellen Barkin, wearing a hunk and big diamond ring, oh, I might I'll bet. They uh, spent so much <laughs> money on the charity that I was, you know, oh, first of all, he underwrites that whole thing. He pretty much keeps that, that uh, afloat there, the NBCC, which mm -hmm. is a gra grassroots advocacy um, group head, headed by Fran Visco and Susan Love is part of it as well right. that tries to get government to fund more money for breast cancer as they should Indeed. and October is breast cancer awareness month we're gonna be doing something every day to help uh, help educate the women right. out there about breast health and breast cancer I along with Deborah Axelrod who's my doctor have written a breast cancer book right called bosom buddies cool. and a hundred percent of the profits go to breast cancer charities a hundred percent so that'll be out sometime in awesome. October when we get them in we're going to tell you. And if That's you would great. like information about uh, the National Breast Cancer Coalition, we're going to put the number up for you right now, which I told them I would do last night, and there it is. 1-800-622-2838, the National Breast Cancer Coalition. Uh, World Wide Web, stopbreastcancer.org is the way to get there via the net. So I want to thank them. I had a great time. Cool. I did. That's great. I got home in time to watch my show. Now, you watched yeah. Once and Again. Yes, I did. I'm very upset that Once and Again is on the same time as Judging Amy. I know. Judging same. Amy is a very good show on CBS. Yeah. Now and Again, very good show on ABC. Right. I've opted to watch Now and Again on the Lifetime rerun on Friday. Uh -huh. They have the rerun of this week's show, 11 o'clock Friday on Lifetime. Okay. Because I really think what they should do is switch Now and Again so that it's opposite that special crimes unit law and order thing. Aha, uh -huh. which you don't want to watch. Because frankly, I have nothing to watch during that hour, <laughs> right. if you follow me. Why can't they do that? I don't is know. Is that so hard? I don't know. Geez. Sounds good. Um, also, uh, you know what I'm calling that show now? Special crimes unit? What are you calling it? I'm calling it, oh no, not again. <laughs> oh, yes. Because there's once and again, now and again, time right. and again. There's a lot of agains this season. Yes, there are. Uh, did you hear Jesse Ventura? They're going to make a musical out of this? Oh, yeah? Can you believe this? Jesse Ventura, they're going to make a musical? Kind of can't. Hit it, John. What's the Wait a minute. Wait, just hold on. Hold everything. The wrong show, John. Sound of Music, not West Side Story. Oh, yeah. Sound of Music. Here Thank we go. you, Johnny. That's what I needed. All right. That's he what I needed. He lost his mind. He lost his place. No, I, no, I no one noticed. We're live! How do you solve a problem like Ventura? How do we get a headlock on that guy? Hey, Buchanan, pass me the tempura. Hey, Bush, today, it's your time to buy. <laughs> All right, it would have been funnier had we gone right into it. Ready? Jesse Ventura, the musical. Don't cry for me, Minnesota. The truth is I'm just a wrestler. Bad decision. No politician. Put down the camera. I'll body slam ya. Oh, my God. <laughs>
Okay, <laughs> Nestle, they're sponsoring our Rosio Games this fall, receiving lots of suggestions from Chub Club members across the country. Take a look at this video sent to us from Haskell, New Jersey. This Chub Club sent it in. Look. This is Laura and Tim from the Piggly Wigglies. Uh, we're going to show you our uh, idea for the uh, Olympics and near Thanksgiving. Ready? Go, 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 go. See, they have a turkey on their head, and they're running to the other side. Then they stuff the turkey on the other side with, you know, low fat, low carbo food stuffing. And then they got to put it back on their head and run back to the other side without dropping any of the stuffing. That's pretty inventive, don't you think, John? It is. Doesn't look easy at all. That's the turkey head race sent in by Laura, Kenny, and her sister Tammy. They've lost 15 pounds since June, and uh, they've used the video. Uh, it was an 18-pound turkey, and they wanted us to know that after they did that video, they cleaned it, they cooked it, and they ate it. It did not go oh, to good. waste. Excellent. They're going to be participating in the Rosio game. <laughs> from our audience and she'd like to sing a little something from Les Mis. Hit it, Tori. There is a castle on a cloud I like to go there in my sleep Aren't any floors for me to sweep Not in my castle 